Hello, I'm Tough Noodle, and today we're going to be playing The Moon Sliver. So let's go ahead and get this started. I've tried, I want to say three to five other times to actually record this, one of which was like an actually good one, and I never pressed record. Alright, oh, okay, we're starting. Okay, so this is kind of like a narrative game. Um, there's no combat to speak of. And... Alright, okay. So I've, I've played this before, like I said. I tried to record before, but got too nervous, or just never pressed record. But um, basically all you have is your flashlight, and you, and you click on all these different items to learn different parts of the story. This guy's the last guy on the island for some reason. And um, you gotta find your way into like some bunker somewhere. You can see all the um, controls. That's what they're called. Okay. And so, also your flashlight runs out, so I'm kind of like wasting battery right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and read some stuff. Ellie, <clears throat> I'm scared. I'm sorry. Ellie was a sullen and beautiful girl, the youngest of all of them, with a mind unfit for lofty thoughts. She had once come in here to see if there was any old firewood. Otherwise, she stayed in her cluttered house where it was warm and familiar. So each time you come across one of these items, it tells a part of the story. And, um, let's see. Abel loved Issa, and he loved Daniel and Ellie. But when his mind wasn't turned toward their well-being, it was filled with thoughts of bleak hopelessness. Sometimes he worried he would rifle through the barrel. Sometimes he would rifle through the barrel. The promise of undiscovered trinkets Trinkets raise the spirits, if only temporarily. You can serve your flashlight battery or charge it at the power outlets. And there's no power outlet in here. So it's been a couple weeks since I played this. But, um, okay. Daniel was a quiet man who spent his life lost in the books of old or lost in his own thoughts. He wondered where the barrels had come from and who had put them here. Because there's barrels everywhere. There's nothing there. Okay. We're going to go outside. So, there's a bunch of outlets around here, from the various buildings, so it's kind of desolate. This is powered by Unity, and from what I can tell, this is like a lot of, um, a lot of the terrain generator in Unity, which I've used before. And, a lot of really basic buildings, but from what I understand, it's made by one guy, so it's not like a huge deal. If it was made by a team, I'd probably expect a little bit more. But one guy, who knows what his like focus is? Thinking about majors and focuses, but who knows what his specialty is basically. Like what he's more apt to doing. So we're in one of the houses. Let's read this thing. She took the knife from the shelf. The blade was dull and rusty, but it was still pointed. She was not smiling. Mm. Oh, there's the box. Um, let me know in the comments if you like the uh, little cursor blinky thing. I'm pretty sure it's there, but if it's not, ignore me. But um, just let me know if it annoys anyone. Um, I just put that there so you know where I'm clicking, but basically the cursor's in the middle of the um, screen anyways, but I turned the cursor off in this software, I'm pretty sure. Okay, there it is. There's a key on this shelf. There we go. And it should go to this box. Yeah. Issa didn't know what the object was, but she remembered her father tinkering with it in his workshop when she was a girl. The workshop and the adjoining home were now far underwater. She was not a young woman, but even now, seeing it brought her comfort. Abel came in. How do I get into storage, he asked. She shut and locked the box. I've told you before, she said. I forgot, he said. I don't go there often. Press the first three until they click. Leave the fourth alone, she said. Okay, yeah, there is, um... A little hatch to like some underground thing and like that's important so remember that first three leave the fourth alone maybe the first time I I played this I didn't get this box and I ran around for about an hour not knowing what to do at all do the thing give me it just okay got it Issa could not talk to Abel about her feelings because Abel was overburdened with his own, so she often sat at her desk and wrote. 
She did not know who would ever read her papers, but there was something profound about preserving thoughts so that they would live long after there was nobody around to read them. The only problem I really have, ooh, get that key. Um, the only problem I really have with like all of, of the narrative is that sometimes it gets in my way. Oh, like, like when I'm trying to see things, especially when the flashlights, no, it mostly gets in the way when the flashlight's off. But um, I think, see, it's not a bad thing, but it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit irritating at times, but it's not like a huge thing. So I, I'm just being nitpicky, but um, I'd rather see a, a little bit more lag time between the different narratives because it's a little, it's a little confusing for my eyes, but I'm kind of half blind. So that's, it might be just me. Let's get the candles. They could make more candles. They couldn't make more wood. So it will bring candles. Okay, Abel. There is an evil man on this island, and I know him well. We played together as youths. We have cried together. We have eaten together. We have loved the same women, betrayed the same women. He is my constant companion and my worst enemy. He puppets my arms, legs, and mouth to his own selfish ends. I secretly hurts everyone I love as I watch, helpless with their unshed, unfelt blood on my hands. He gifts my flesh with indescribable pleasures and blights my soul with unutterable despair. His name is Sin, and we are irrevocably bound together. Surely there exists no hell worse than this. Oh boy. See, and now it won't go away. Not, not pleased with that. Okay. Abel read to escape. Daniel read to feed his lofty, strange thoughts. Issa read to pass the time. But Ellie, as far as Abel knew, she hadn't opened a book in years. What did she do all day? He didn't know. Sometimes he worried about her. He worried about all of them. Were they as melancholy as he was? Get that text out of my face. All right, there's a key in here somewhere. Stop it. Um, I thought there was a key. Stop. Okay, so you have to find a key somewhere. Mm. No. Okay. Oh. What childlike emptiness I feel to find the most peaceful solace in fantasy. To find a masqueraded truth more vivid than reality. What sort of twisted villains were the, for the ancient writers to taunt us with unreachable worlds more beautiful than our own. We have enough stored food to live long lives. When our wood runs out, we will be cold, but only so cold as to be uncomfortable. The water is rising, but it, it will be many years before it reaches our homes. Technically, we survive. But to what end? This island is all the world we know. And it is nothing but the broken pieces of a fairy tale. Oh boy. So we gotta find the key. Because I'm gonna open this box. Okay. Can I just... Yeah, see that... That, uh, that text is gonna bite me. I'm gonna turn up my volume a little bit. So we got, we went in these two houses, we're gonna go in this one. There's a fire going. Should probably charge my flashlight, but I'm stubborn. Um, book. What were you and Abel doing at his house yesterday while I was climbing the mountain, he answered, casually flipping through the book on, on her table. It was covered in dust. Where's the key? She glared at him. I'm going to get wood, she spat. Did you think I was too stupid to know, he said. I'm going to get wood. Mm. I think the writing could use some improvement, some of the dialogue. Mm. Let's see. That doesn't have creepy written all over it. Abel, Abel often visited Daniel. He loved to talk, and Daniel loved to listen. Issa and I were out for a walk, said Abel as he entered. I thought I'd stop by before you caught up before you got caught up in a book. Daniel put his book down. Hello, he said. His expression confused Abel. Ugh. Should really probably Okay. Let's go charge this thing. Okay, so the key's around here somewhere. I just don't remember where it is. So if it takes 
a ridiculous amount of time for me to find it. I'm just gonna edit it and just cut right to it. Never mind. But, um, oh wait, yeah, there's a charge station. I wish you could run just a little bit, a little bit faster. Maybe that, maybe that's just because I played this before and now I'm just kind of going through the motions. Ha! All right. We're gonna go look in the other houses just to make sure I saw everything. Just real quick. Now that I have. Oh, no, that was that. Never mind. Ah, key is right by the box. <laughs> My bad. That's the thing. He watched Ellie put her clothes back on, his eyes unfocused, not really seeing her. She didn't say anything. Her lips were pursed in that eternal, ignorant scowl. He got up from the bed and opened his box. He used to believe that one day he could plant the last few seeds and they would be able to grow food again. But now he knew that the ground was poison. Is Issa had given the seeds to him for safekeeping. Issa loved him. Issa trusted him. His eyes filled with tears, but he didn't let Ellie see. I'm supposed to meet Issa for a walk, he said. She didn't answer. She just left. Alright, get the text off my screen. Sorry about that. Did not see the key before. That's probably because I didn't have my flashlight on because I was too stubborn to charge it. So just charge your flashlight. Generally a good idea. Especially when you're like the last person on an island. It's generally a good idea. There's a little building over there, but we're gonna go up there first. Just to check. I think there's some story. Yep. We're old, Isa, said Abel, and we're getting older. We've been getting older since we were born, said Isa. She was always smiling. Abel never smiled. Alright, you can jump. Barely. They reached the ruins and strolled leisurely th through them toward the shoreline. Isa could remember the old build when the old building still stood here, filled with families. I'm sorry, he said, and he cried because he often cried during these talks. For what, she said. For a lot of things. Hmm. These conversations were not new. Long ago, Isa had learned to love Abel, despite and for his despondency. She hugged him as the wind tossed her long gray hair around. Saying that she knows more than she's telling us, is, said Ellie. That's so creepy. Okay. Ah, charged. What is your problem with Issa, Daniel said, putting his book down. He was annoyed at being interrupted here. Bop. I don't really know what these do. Um, my problem is that she's a liar, said Ellie angrily. There we go. Uh, fiddling with the knobs on this machine as she paced around. And that I have to keep explaining this to you over and over again. You don't know her like I know her. Exactly. You're not an impartial judge, he said. I'm saying she knows more than she's telling us, said, El said Ellie. She keeps the chapel locked and she's the only one with the key, said Ellie, leaning on the barrels and folding her arms. So you're saying she took it? He said. I'm kind of worried that I can't pick up any weapons. But there is no combat in here, so it's not a big deal. I just kind of feel safer with a hammer or something. Can't really go too far in the water, like maybe a few feet and then it just kind of stops you. So I tried a lot. And over there, like I I would go over there, but there's not there's nothing over there. It just says this is old. That's about it. Issa kept a smile on her face, although she don't she she did not feel like smiling. The rest of junk cast shadows on the opposite wall. How do you know Abel didn't take it, he said. Because I trust him, she said. He is a dismal man, but he would never hurt any of us. Do you trust Ellie? Daniel didn't answer immediately. I trust all of you, he said, because that's how we have to live. Daniel, you're, Daniel, you're the last one I gave the key to, said Isa. Daniel stared at the mysterious control panels. He didn't meet her eyes. He never met anyone's eyes. 
I didn't take it, he said. Why would I take it? I'm, I'm the one that told you it was missing. Why wouldn't the guilty one start the whole thing? Why not? Oh boy, that's a nice creepy. But no. A strange acidic smell emanated from the pipe. Ooh. I read a little bit about this like the first few times I played this. It's, it's a game about atmosphere. So it's less about well, of course, it's less about combat, jump scares, like, like stuff like that, but it's more about atmosphere and like really building things up, which, which I really appreciate. Not that jump scares are bad, they're just a little overused these days. Daniel was still thinking about his talk with Abel the day before he absentmindedly picked the book up. Something caught his eye, or rather, the lack of something. Slipper was gone. Oh, boy. oh world, oh prison, dingy white, oh ghostly shadow gray, your whelming lies of false delight are dark and cold as moonless night and bleak as sunless day. The word of Hector. One? The first? I don't know. The moon sliver was written by the pure spring rain upon pages of dried leaves and found by noble Hector. The moon spoke to Hector, saying, Take take this, the moon sliver, and make for it a place in the chap chapel of infinite light. For it is a holy document. Man cannot read it, but its every letter is known to the demons of the night, and greatly feared. Know that it will protect you, even should my light cease to bathe the night in holy silver. Give it a place of honor and treat it as a prized possession, for it is your weapon against evil. And so Hector took the moon sliver and placed it in the chapel of infinite light upon a silver pedestal and placed it in the chapel. <laughs> Reading that, sorry. Upon a silver pedestal, and the night was warm with light and the day was bright with warmth. My bad. Let's see if I can read these in order. I think there's more papers around here. Okay, there we go. The woodland teeth, the monster of the forest, was more tenacious, tenacious than the other demons. It hated the people of Hector and desired to take the island away from them. And it lurked in the dark, in dark corners and unseen passageways, scheming horrific schemes. It came to pass that Ursula was taken, stalked by the woodland teeth in the dark underground, attacked, and dragged down to hell. Then the moon came to Hector in a dream and said, Hector, the time has come. Your great enemy has arrived. You would all do well to tremble, for his power is great and his depravity is unspeakable. Go take the moon sliver from its pedestal and do battle. And so Hector went to the chapel of infinite light and retrieved the moon sliver and went into the tunnels. There should be a three, I think. There it is. Most of the text is illegible. Hector descended, darkness, terrible whispering, infinite and deep, did not know how long he wandered, Promises of brutal torture and mutilation waiting. Begone, teeth of the forest. Spoke the holy incantations written upon. Return to the surface. So that was three. Mm, this one's four. Okay. Again, the moon came to Hector in a dream. The woodland teeth is vanquished, it said. Your people are safe now, but it still waits, lurking in the depths. It fears the moon sliver, and it will not dare appear again while the holy document remains in your possession. But know this, should the moon sliver ever be destroyed, even my divine light will not be able to save you from the wrath of the woodland teeth and the darkness of hell. Keep it safe. Keep it ready. May you live in prosperity on this island that I have given you. Let your prosperity be a sign that the words I speak are true. That thing's gone. Okay. Oh boy. This could be more creepy atmosphere. Oh, it's rainy. So we're gonna go over here. Go over here. Okay. Over here? Pretty sure. 
I like this. This is kind of cool. Alright, there's that thing. So we're gonna go in here. There's also that thing over there, but we can't go in there yet. Because we have to escape into the mountains. The monstrous tracks leading from the hatch were brand new, but the wind quickly erased them. Oh, that's lovely. The night was windy and cold. Remember that code we found before? Three and leave the fourth one alone. Two, three, leave the fourth one alone, and here we go. I think there's like one jump scare-ish thing that happens down here, but it's mostly like a bunch of um, creepy sounds, some creepy atmospheric music. Nothing too scary, it's more like just like anticipation and scaring yourself. Ellie was uneasy. The darkness had never felt this menacing before. It seemed alive, watchful. The sounds kind of remind me of mist and there's like a lot of exploration just like this but this is just like a point and click mm, cold long forgotten nobody had been below in many years but you can still press the button so I'm wondering if you can ever go down here I'm not sure let me there That's kind of cool. You can't see the end. So it kind of gets your heart beating a little bit. Ellie, Daniel's voice echoed around the tunnels. Uh, silence. I need that last word. She couldn't explain the feeling. It was as though something was lurking around every corner, staying out of sight, staying ahead of her. Don't want to be down here. Daniel heard soft, scratching footsteps behind him. He turned and shined his flashlight around the tunnel. Nothing. Even though I've played this before, it, it kind of creeps me out a little bit, especially because I'm here alone in the apartment and it's at night. And I do have lights on, but I left a curtain open so I could see outside. Aww. That was not smart. Mm -mm. He called again. Ellie, still no answer, but he heard footsteps again. I don't think there's any moving components besides like the wind and rain and stuff, and, like the dirt in the air. I don't think this is the right way. Oh wait, never mind. He didn't even have time to cry out at the sh at the shadow silhouetted in the flashlight beam lunging toward him. Again, I want to pick up that hammer. So that's Daniel's flashlight, right? Yeah. Pretty sure. Mostly sure. 50% sure. Kind of like the dinginess on the... On our little screen. Oh, this hall's too long. felt his breath before she felt its claws, and then she was gone. Because I've played this before, I know that's all there is to it down here. What do you mean? Like, the last two times I played this, I wandered around. No. Last two times? Maybe. I wandered around for about an hour trying to get everything, but it's, there's not much down here. It just looks, it looks bigger than it is, but it's just like a big not really a maze, but there's a lot of hallways. So it, it feels big. You just have to follow the text. So you can follow the text right back out. I'm gonna charge my flashlight again. For some reason, in my head, he's like poking it, like poking the outlet with his fingers.
Yeah. All right. back out, because down there is creepy. Let's try it one more time. And go outside. The night is wild and cold. Holy shit. So we're going to try to go in the mountain. I didn't do this before, but if you go up to this thing, I said you can't get in here until nightfall. But, um, hopefully you can hear me a little bit over the sound of the wind. There we go. Okay. Isa couldn't remember the last time she had been under the mountain. There was no reason to come here, but she had looked everywhere else. She clutched the old knife in her right hand. Yesterday, the moon silver was missing. Went missing. Today, Ellie, Daniel, and Abel were all nowhere to be found. She knew the word of Hector by heart. Did you hear that? The sinister implications were not lost on her. I heard a click. This is where I stopped. I don't know what happens after this. Oh, wait. Abel heard her and answered, I'm here. There was something strange about his voice, something Issa didn't like. What are you doing here? Oh, I don't. I am reading ages. Of, I'm reading of ages past, he said. Do you know where Ellie and Daniel are, she said. I do not, he said. They are missing, she said. They are missing and the moon sliver is missing. Do you understand me? Do you understand what this implies? I do, he said. Night will fall in a few hours and we need to stick together. We can sleep in the same house. Mine or yours. We'll keep the fire burning. We'll keep the door locked. And we will pray, Abel. We will pray to the unseen moon for mercy and protection. Are you happy here, Isa? You can't stay in the dark. It thrives in the dark. Are you happy? Yes, I am happy. Please, Abel. Oh, there were tears in his eyes and he struggled to control his voice. He said, I know you. I know every inch of you and I know every corner of your mind. You aren't happy. None of us are happy. Issa didn't respond. I'm staying here. The tears were flowing fle freely now. I would like it if you stayed with me, Issa. Please stay with me. I will find you, Abel. I let it out, Issa. I destroyed the moon sliver. Issa was shocked and silent. I burned it yesterday, after I talked with Daniel. I swear I'm hearing footsteps right now. Her eyes were filling with betrayed, angry tears. What? Abel, no. Why? Do you want to be dragged to hell? Do you want us to be dragged there with you? We're already in hell. This island, this horrible, barren, lowly island. This place of sin. This, this is hell. I saw the blas blasphemous scraps of paper Jeremiah found those many years ago. I read them before they were destroyed. Perhaps I was the only one who did. I did not believe them. But I, I, have lived, I have lived life since then, and I have seen the truth of their words. Issa could not respond as tears streamed down her face. She just kept walking toward the sound of his voice, the knife clutched in her hand. This way? Ugh. She, you did not read the blasphemous, blasphemous scraps, Issa. But I did, and I remember them with incredible clarity. Supernatural clarity, even. Fear not the dark shadows where the scratches in the night, for the woodland teeth is your salvation. It is your escape. It said this and more, Issa. The woodland teeth is not here to take us to hell. It is here to take us away from hell. She could see him ahead, her flashlight beam cutting through the sickly fog. My flashlight doesn't work. He was sitting in a chair, a book on his lap. As she approached, she could see that he was crying, too. I believe the word of Hector, she said, and I will not go to hell. Please trust me. Please. I believe the word of Hector, she said again, as she put the knife to her chest, point first. The music's getting louder in my head. No, no, Issa, please don't. Stay with me. Don't leave me alone. I love you, she spat tearfully. I love you so much. She closed her eyes and pushed. She remembered where her heart was located from one of her father's old books. Abel was too slow to catch her falling body. He knelt beside her and sobbed for some time. Oh boy. He was not a strong young man anymore, but Issa's body was light. 
He would take her out to the water. She had always loved the water. But then what? Read? Read until it found him? No. He didn't feel like reading anymore. He was ready to be rid of this entire cursed island, books and all. He would simply wander aimlessly and freely to take one last look at the island and feel the wind blowing the memories away. It's a lamplight. And then, when night fell, he would return. to Rachel Szymanski. The end. I hope you all enjoyed that because I sure did. I hadn't seen the ending before. And um, it was a really enjoyable game. I really liked the whole a atmospheric thing. There was nothing to, like, um, there was, like, no skill involved. Like, re like regarding combat or anything like that. It's just um, for anybody who likes to explore in video games, like every single nook and cranny, that type of thing, to see what see what other goodies are there. This is kind of that game. Well, this is that game. And um, it's not terribly creepy. It's just kind of like scaring yourself. Like, like, what's in there? I don't know. It's more like the terror of the unseen type of thing, which is my favorite thing. Like, um, if you've ever seen Jeepers Creepers, the first one was scary. Like, you barely ever saw the monster, then Jeepers Creepers too. they completely ruined it, and just, yeah, it wasn't scary anymore. It was very, very upset. But, this is a good game. I loved it. Um, I can't wait. I don't know if the um, creator or this particular team have done anything else, but I I will look, because I'm, I'm excited to play. I think I think they'll do a great job on pretty much anything else they do. I hope they continue with this, this sort of um, direction, because I'd be really excited to play. Um, if they do decide to add some combat, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a terrible idea. Just um, like not making it too too terribly difficult. Otherwise, it really takes away from the experience. But all in all, I really love this game. I'm looking forward to whatever else they have planned or have come out with. I'm not sure when, when this is actually made. It says Unity Four free engine, so I'm not really sure because I think Unity Five's out as of now. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed like watching me play. Um, I hope my voice didn't drone on too much. That was a lot of narrative to, to read, but um, I didn't want to just stand there. So you could like pause and read it. I'd rather just have like maybe my, maybe my voice is in the background or something while you're working. But that was a lot of fun for me. I hope it was, it was as much fun for you, or at least relaxing, because I, I, there was not, not there's not there wasn't a lot of, a lot of yelling. I'm very tired. But, uh, <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, I hope to do more videos soon. It is spring break for me right now, but I am heading home tomorrow. But um, I hope to see you guys again. If you have any tips for me on um, pretty much anything, uh, I don't know how I'm going to edit this video. That's going to be a bit of a challenge for me because the last time I edited a video was, I want to say 2010. Um, so if you have any tips for me, write them in the comments below. Um, uh, hit Hit the like button. Hit the like button if you liked what I did. Um, hit the dislike button if you didn't, and I'm sorry if you didn't. But um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.